Um, and if you saw the ad, you would have seen that I have been characterized as an expert in leave no trace. And I wanted to confess my wife is here, and she will admit that around the house I may not be an expert in leave no trace. Okay? So we want to qualify this. What are we talking about when we're talking about leave no trace? Um, so does anybody know what leave no trace is? Yes, we've got a couple. What 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 do you what do you think leave no trace is? Perfect. Did you hear what she said? Whatever you take in is what you take out. When you are hiding your camping, it's all about the wilderness. Okay. So that's why the rules don't apply when I'm at home. Just so you guys know. All right. So um, so yeah, I I actually uh, am a member of the Georgia Appalachian Trail Club. And the reason why this is important is because every year, anywhere from two to 4,000 people descend into Georgia to begin hiking the Appalachian Trail with the hopes of doing all 2,000 miles, okay? Now, do we think that all 2,000 people are highly expert and will leave no trace? What do we think? Yes? No? No? We got a couple of no's? Okay. So I can tell you that, yes, in fact, some of those people aren't at a 100% level at leaving no trips. Now, here's the thing. The entire Appalachian Trail is maintained by volunteers. So these are the people that are out there literally building the trail. They are doing rock work, they're making sure that uh, when there's rain coming in, it doesn't wash out the trail. This is a huge effort. It's one of the largest volunteer efforts on the planet. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> so, imagine if in Georgia, two to 4,000 people show up, I mean, think about it, on the, in the, in the through hiker bubble, that's anywhere from 100 to 200 people every single day starting their journey. And where do you think they all spend the night on that night? One place, right? They're all bunched up, and we call that the bubble. Now, when they all show up, and they're out in the wilderness, and maybe they're not all perfectly in tune with nature and leaving no trace, okay? And then they leave, who do you think cleans it all up? The Georgia Appalachian Trail Club maintenance crew goes out there and they're like, hey, we got to do this, right? So this is what we call an impact. Now with you guys, how many of you here are through hiking right now? You guys headed up to Maine? <laughs> Nobody's headed up to Maine? All right, cool. But imagine, how many of you actually go out hiking in the wilderness? Raise your hand if you go out hiking in the wilderness. Okay? So, you show up and you look on the ground and you see a pile of mandarin oranges. You see a pile of banana peels. You see a diaper. Okay? So, you guys are going to be like, hey, my wilderness experience is not what I planned this morning. Right? So it sounds great. So the whole idea here is that hopefully we can answer the same question in the same way. All of Leave No Trace starts with the answer to this question. Do you, do you care? Alright? If you care, if you are like, yes, I want my wilderness experience to be very pristine. I want my wilderness experience to be filled with the sounds of what? Can we hear that now? Nobody wants to go bird call? Okay. So we go out into nature and we want to hear the birds. We want to smell what? Flowers. Flowers. Does anybody know what petrichor is? What's that for? Hold on, hold on, you guys. This is the educational part of today. All right. What is Petrichor for a thousand okay. dollars? Damp earth soil. What is that smell of the wilderness after a 
rainstorm. Mmm, it has a name and it's called Petrichor. Right? Isn't that amazing? So we want our wilderness experience to be beautiful. And if we care, we want to minimize negative impacts. Okay? If we care. If we don't care, it's all good, right? Just throw all your stuff out there and then we're there. Now, but if we care, and we all hopefully just care, we want to minimize our negative impacts. This is the question though. How do we do this? How can we minimize our negative impacts and enjoy the wilderness? Does anybody want to know the answer to these questions? And more. And what I'm thinking of playing. She said yes. Alright? We want to know more. So we're going to use a little bit of a story today. We're going to imagine in our minds that we're going to go on a trip. Okay? You guys want to go on a trip with me? Yes. Thank you. And unfortunately, I'm going to spill the beans that at the end of this trip, we're going to discover that what we were looking for was inside of us the whole time. <laughs> All right? But I didn't want to spoil the ending. I just didn't want you to take the journey without you know, knowing how it's going to end. So we want to have fun on our journey, right? We're out. We're all together. We're going to go on this, this mental journey. I've got a backpack here. So I'm ready to go. Right? Ready to go. And this is it. We want to have fun. We also want, you guys can see this image, we want to enjoy the wilderness. Right? And I, I apologize, you guys. This is an awesome photo over here. It's a table fest. Okay? So we're going to see the animals. We're going to smell the smells. It's going to be wonderful. And then, this is what happens to all of us on our trip. Okay? This is what happens. Okay? Now, has this ever happened to anybody? All right. So, you guys can't see it, but... It's a picture of a guy in the rain, and it's storming. All right? So, not great. Now, we're, we're probably thinking to ourselves, we had no way of knowing, right? Is there any possible way we could have known what the weather would be like that day? Anybody? No. No? There's no way? So, leave no trace has this set of principles that we're going to follow. And in the beginning, the first one is called plan and prepare. And here's the thing. Every one of these lead no principles comes with a hand signal that you can use to remember them later. And I am quizzing everybody at the end of this. Okay? So, lead no trace principle number one, we use our finger and we go, hmm, that's principle number one. We're going to plan and prepare ahead. No one's doing this with me. Everybody, let's see if you can do this. We are going to plan and prepare ahead. And we might want to check the weather. Okay? If we know that there's going to be bad weather, could we maybe bring an umbrella? All right? Bring a little umbrella? Maybe. If there's going to be a tsunami, what would we do? There's a tsunami on the forecast. And Dad says, we're still going, right? Anybody got that, Dad? Yeah. All right. So what I'm advocating is that we plan and prepare ahead, and we make legit judgment decisions, and we bring the things that we need. Has anybody ever heard of the 10 essentials? The 10 essentials in the brain on high future. Nobody has heard of this. Okay, so what about a map? Would you guys put a map in your bags? In plan and prepare for the map? Alright, cool. What about a compass? Would you bring a compass? Okay, what about a chemical firewall? No. Would that seem a little weird? A little weird chemical firewall? I've seen it. I've actually seen this, okay? Guy heading up straight around with a young fire log with a backpack. Yes, for real. He, he wanted to stay warm that night, right? I mean, you can't blame him. So, plan and prepare is super important. 
and we have a whole list of things that we can do. We only have one hour, and we have to move on to the other linear trace principle. So now let's imagine we're out hiking, we're walking along the trail, and we see something really cool. It's over to the right, and it's off trail, and we go trample all the bushes, and trample all the flowers, and we go see it. Is that a good idea or a bad idea? Bad idea. Ooh. And, and why? Why is it a bad idea? He, he got the right answer, guys. Messing up the ecosystem. You're messing up the ecosystem. That should be a rap song here. Just messing up the ecosystem. Right? So yeah, you could be trampling uh, wilderness and pristine areas, and you can get lost. So leave no trace principle number two is to walk on the trail, is to stay on the durable surface. If the, the Georgia Appalachian Trail on the point made this awesome trail. It was all the way to Maine, right? So you don't, you don't have to worry. Just get on the trail and follow the white lady. But if you start to go off trail, maybe some bad things are happening. But also, the whole point is how do you minimize your impact? If you camp somewhere, you should camp in a designated spot, right? Because that place has already been reserved for human activity. But if you go, into the pristine area and you just spread it all out and put your campsite there, when you get up to leave, haven't you signaled to everyone else that that's a, a new spot? So in about a week, two weeks, three weeks, or a month, that whole area is just going to be flat. Right? So that's the kind of avoid in order to minimize our impact. So now, we're hiding along the trail. Does anybody see anything wrong with this picture? Anything wrong with that? So here's the pop quiz. How long do you think it takes to have a banana peel decompose? Anybody have any ideas? Take the banana peel, chuck it out of the ground. How long will it take to decompose? I'm a bit of a cheater here. It takes three to four weeks. Close. But still, do banana peels from Kroger belong on the Appalachian Trail? Right? I mean, it, it, it adds yellow to the, to, the, to the sea, right? And it's just going to biodegrade anyway. But who can anticipate the negative impact? What do you guys think the negative impact is if we all brought a banana with all Uh, what else? What else could be a negative impact with banana peels? <laughs> you could slip on it. That's the number one answer right there. Number one answer. So the, the thing that's interesting about this question is we have to think about the impact. Animals that are foraging use their sense of what? Smell. And now we're littering the entire trail with the smells of mandarin oranges and citrus. We're littering it with bananas. And these animals are going to run out of sight. They're going to say, what, what is this? And they're going to go, this smells awesome, right? And the whole time they're looking at the banana peel, this is what they're not doing. They're not finding the food that they were supposed to be finding. They're getting all confused. Discombobulated. So it's impacting the wilderness by introducing all these smells that don't belong there. Plus, does anyone think that it looks awesome when you get to the top of Blood Mountain and you look down and it's just mandarin peels and banana peels? Anyone think that looks awesome? Not so much? I should say no, for sure. Right? So we want to minimize our impact. So I've got my bag here. Some things that have been found on the Appalachian Trail. Do you guys think this belongs? Cocan? No? So, Cocan is going to take 500 years to decompose. Kind of interesting. What about a wool sock? Is that cool? 
I did have time to try No. Wool sock, one to five years. It's not bad. Here's a good one, and it's gross. But yeah, we see that comes out there. Yeah. Right? Anybody want to guess before I tell you? How long will a diaper take to be the boat out of the world? 550 years. Alright, not great. And then we've got our good buddy, the plastic bottle. Probably the one thing you guys go hiking up with, Amicalola. And you see the go up the stairs. Who here's going up the stairs? You can see the top of Amicalola. All these people. When you're going up the stairs, did you see any of these plastic bottles on the ground? Okay, plastic bottles. 450 years. Okay? So these are just things to think about. The more we know about our impact, the more we can make decisions about how we want to behave when we're out on the trail. So, the Impact Trace principle number three is all about disposing of your waste properly. Now, there's another type of human waste, and I apologize to the children in the room, but there's another type of human waste that we have to address. Okay? If there's any kids in the audience, I apologize, but it's called poop. Okay? And I don't know how it's got in my bag. It doesn't belong in my bag. Poop is not supposed to be in my bag. Does poop belong on the trail? We've got a couple of yeses. But so we're going to learn. It's okay, guys. We're going to learn. Poop on the trail? Yes or no? Alright? We have a technical term for this in Georgia Appalachian Trail Club. When we see one of these, on the trail, it's called a surface deposit. <laughs> and it is not good. All right? Um, unfortunately, the negative impact of something like this near a water source on the trail is disease. All right? Unfortunately, we know that there is a current issue of norovirus that the thermometers are experiencing on the trail. Not good. So does anyone know where this is supposed to go if you're out hiking? In the ground. Yes. What do we call that when we put this in the ground? What? It's called a cat hole. Okay? So if you ever see somebody hiking and they have a trowel with them, it's not because they're doing gardening when they go camping. Okay? So, the idea that we train all of these new hikers to use is, please go 200 feet away from a water source, 200 feet away from the trail, 200 feet away from the camp area, dig a cap hole, and when we dig our cap hole, it's going to be 6 to 8 inches deep. Okay? Raise your hand if you have done this on the trail. All right, we've got some pros here, got some pros over here. Okay, I gotta tell you something, personal experience. It's the best. It is, it is the way humans were designed. If you haven't done it, I highly recommend it. Okay? Live in nature. Um, now, here's the thing I mentioned that there were these hand signals for the no trace. Okay, so we have one plant that's up here. We had two walk on the surfaces. And then the three, which is all about disposing of waste properly, is we're going to dig a cat hole. Alright, let's see if we're going to dig your cat hole. Alright? Number three, we're digging a cat hole. Sounds good? Alright, cool. So number four. Leave no try to catch number four. <laughs> So I'll tell a story here, because this is a real world story, and it kind of, it kind of makes this uh, very tangible. Now in my drawing here, can anyone tell what's wrong? Okay. Alright, what's wrong with this photo? Anybody know? We've got this spray thing. We've got Indian countries that are 2 billion years old. Are you guys supposed to kick it 
and destroy it, or leave it alone and let the people behind you see it and enjoy it as well. Right? So that's the idea. Now, this is a real world story, and I call this the Pristine Rock. I go on a hiking trail probably three times a week. There's a beautiful rock, two and a half miles in, people sit there and they relax. I've run, I've run past this rock easily for three or four years. One day, one person took a pen and tagged me. Okay? And what they, what they wrote on it wasn't even like this. The next day, there was more. And after one week, the entire covering of that rock was absolutely covered. It only took one week because the first person who said, what's the big deal? Right? Who cares? It's just, it's just one little thing. And they wrote on it, and within a week, they basically said, guess what? I'm all about, you know, graffiti. So what I did was I took a picture of it, and I hiked up there with sandpaper and a cleaner, and I spent three or four hours bringing this back to Christine. <laughs> It has been another three years. That rock has never seen the human since. It's a one week, right? And that's it. That's it. So we don't think about our impact, right? That all it takes is one person to open the door for our hands. Okay? And I appreciate the fact you all applauded that poor rock, that pristine rock. Um, but it's a beautiful story, and it happens on the Appalachian Trail every day. Unfortunately, many of the trail maintainers have to go back and paint over white blazes where people have tagged their names. Okay, so that's the negative impact. So what we want to do is reduce our impact. We want to make sure that we're not leaving anything worse than we found it, and that is leave our trace to number four. And here's the hand symbol for that. So you kind of have to use two hands. And for me, I have to figure out how to count, but it's one, two, three, four. Okay, for two hands. And what we're doing is we're making a number four, and I'm going to take some pictures. All right? So we're going to leave what we find, and we're going to just take a picture of it, and that's how we capture what we see. Okay? So instead of writing your name on a letter, just take a picture. It lasts longer. All right? You've heard the phrase, uh, take only pictures, um, leave only papers. That's kind of the idea. So now on our journey, on our little hike, we've seen some amazing things, and it's time for us to camp. We're going to take our chemical fire log out of our backpack, of course, right? And then we're going to talk to our friends, and we're going to agree to a campfire, right? Does anybody like campfires when they go hiking? Yes? Nobody else likes a campfire? These guys are the pros on here, by the way. So, seriously though, you go out camping, you have to have a campfire, right? Is it wrong? And marshmallows and s'mores. But here's the thing, you must make the campfire as large as you possibly can, right? Yes! So, so if you're a guy, you're like, yeah! And you can bring a saw, but I've got some saws over here, right? So you're out there just chopping down trees. Gasoline. Right, bringing the gasoline. Uh -oh. You know, mm -hmm. everyone's going to mess with us tonight. Big fire, big fire, right? Very cool. Now, remember what we said earlier? What did we say? Something about minimizing negative impacts. Right? What could be the negative impact of, oh, I don't know, Fire in a forest. Any idea? Just brain service with me. What could possibly go wrong? Anyone? Yeah. And what? You can make Smokey mad. He's got his little Smokey stock. So Smokey the Bear comes out and he's like, hey, you, only you can prevent forest fires. And he's like, who will work, right? You do not want to make Smokey mad. But yes, some of the negative impacts might be, oh, I don't know, a forest fire. And there is a sad tale where these two kids are playing with matches and the fire got out of control. 
and it actually makes its way all the way down um, into that one. Right? So a lot of people don't know that that was caused by, unfortunately, some kids playing with that. So it's not a great story, but it's a, it's a cautionary tale. Okay? So I'm going to give you guys a little thing to remember or think about. If you're hiking, if you're camping, I would encourage you maybe not to chop down half the forest to make your um, swamps. All right? You could instead use wood that is down, dry, dead, baking. These are all that beef. Okay? So if it's down, it means it's already on the ground. If it's dinky, it means you're not using any wood any bigger than your thumb, right? If it's dry, obviously it's going to burn a little bit better. Now, when we say distance, what we mean is all of these definitely camp areas, typically um, there's no wood anywhere. It's all been taken from. So if you get to the distance, it's going it's to be easier for you to find it than use. Okay? So leave no trace, that's rule number five, is about minimizing your campfire negative impact. Alright, and the hand signal for that is really creative. Alright, you guys ready? Five is minimize campfire risk. So we're doing a little wood fire plug in. Alright? Cool. Alright, so we go to Christ principle number six. For this one, I decided to enlist some help. We would like to minimize our impact on wildlife. Okay, so let's imagine that you guys are out on the Appalachian Trail and you run across, and this happens all the time, a wild squid. Okay, this guy's out on the trail, minding his own business, doing his own thing. Now, what do you guys think you should be doing? You guys see the squid on the trail? Right? Should you hope? Okay, so then, so then you've got kids out there, and then they see a black bear, okay? Now, this is one of the most common questions we get, is what do we do when we come across a black bear out in the Appalachian Trail? And let me tell you, the experts in this are over here. We've got Gerald, who's going to learn how to be bear safe. So even though I'm going to touch on this, if this is something that you're interested in them more, there's our experts. They're all about trying to make sure that bears are wild, they are happy, we can appreciate them, and we can keep ourselves separate and be bear safe. Okay? But I still want to give you guys some tips. Who here knows what to do if you're just hiking and you see a bear? What do you do? You clap. You make noise. You take a picture. You say, can I get on your back? Can I get on your back? Right? Now, now here's the thing. And this has happened to me. You're out there, and you not only see a bear, but you see mama bear with little baby bear. Of food. If the bear thinks that they're sources of food, they're, they're like, that's 
that's cool, that's easy calories for me, and they're going to get habituated. And that creates a really bad situation. What we want is the bears to think, these people don't have food, you make noise, and they're going away. Okay? So yes, making noise is a great way to do this. Um, I carry one of these. All right? It's not bear spray. All right? Although I was talking to Gerald, and he recommends bear spray. All right? So again, if you want to use bear spray and learn how to use it, please talk to him. But what I use is a little submarine boy. This is a real story. Okay? I, yeah, this, he's got one as well, right? He's got the mega, I've got the little. But this horn was used by me, maintaining my trail. And I hear to my left a very loud sound. And I see Mama Bear going right in front of me. And this was right here. So I hit it just to scare, just to let the bear know, hey, I'm here. And then I see Baby Bear, and then I see Baby Bear number two right in front of me. And so it's just enough to say, look, they're doing their own thing, I'm doing my own thing. But I did hit this to kind of say, look, you know, stay away. Um, so these are ways to stay safe. These are ways, ways to stay bear safe. But it goes back to how do you respect wildlife? Right? You know, we want to feed them. And again, we want to keep our distance. Now, another great way of doing this is called a rule of thumb. We're all going to practice this. Okay? Let's imagine, let's see what else we have. Let's, let's imagine we're out on the trail, okay? And we see a blue whale out on the trail, okay? Just swing around, okay? Now, what I want you to do is put your thumbs on the and try to cover up with the blue whale with your thumb as I'm holding it, all right? Can you guys see the little whale, or are you able to cover it up? So guess what? You guys are fine, but she can't cover it up. She's too close to the little whale. So she's going to have to swim further up the trail to stay a little bit further away, because if you come across a beluga whale, or, and this is, this is true, this could happen, and I apologize if you're afraid of these, but yes, we do have snakes on the trail. Okay? They stop the so, Okay? So I'm up at Blood Mountain. I was standing there last summer. People are walking up. I'm just standing right there. People coming up to me and I say, whoa, 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 don't sit on that rock. Right? There's a copperhead right there. And while I'm standing there, two massive timber rattlesnakes come right here. So I'm standing in between these three snakes, and I'm telling people, you can take pictures, but you have to use a rule of thumb. And I put my, my uh, hiking poles where they can do that. They can stand and they can do this, they can cover up the snakes, but they can still see and take pictures. Okay, so the rule of thumb there is that we want to respect wildlife. These are all the different ways that we can do that. The hand signal is, what number are we on? Do you remember what number? Six. six. So, for our hand signal for number six, we got respect wildlife. And we have that to the beer. Okay? You guys, not only you were doing this, you got to, you got to, all right, you got to master this because you're going to be, you're going to be a quiz on it. Okay, so leave no trace number seven. There are seven principles. By the way, this is, a, this is a cute picture, just to recap how we respect wildlife. Okay, is there anything wrong with that photo? Perfectly behind you. Just something to think about, you know. Should the little kids be feeding the bison? Alright, so, leave no trace principle number seven. Has anybody been standing there after hiking all day to get to the view, to be at peace with the universe? And the guy comes up with his massive music box, and he's all jamming, and he's got some reggae going, 
He stands there right next to you. Right? Does that ever happen to anyone? Yes, yes, okay. It's not a great thing, right? But in this case, what is being negatively impacted? It's not nature necessarily, but isn't it our enjoyment of nature? What's being impacted is the peace and serenity that we came there to experience. And yet here's this person that's like, yeah, but my way of experiencing this is by playing the music or not. Okay? It doesn't quite fit the environment. So income trace principle number seven is, and these are the hand signals, it is to respect others. Simple. And the hand signal is, peace, have a nice day. <laughs> All right? So there's a lot of ways that we can respect others, but that story of being in a beautiful place and thinking about the people around you. Right? Has anybody ever been to like Yellowstone uh, or the Grand Canyon and it's just super crowded? And you just you, know, you drive all the way there and you're like, I'm gonna see the Grand Canyon. And you're just like, I think the canyon's over there, right? And it's just completely impact for people. So we have to think about that. How does our impact affect other people? And especially how does it impact in a negative way? So if we have to respect other people and be conscious. I want to have a beautiful experience. I want to leave a beautiful experience for other people. That's a hard question. Right? How do we identify those impacts and then minimize them? So here's another fun rule that's part of uh, respecting others. And in fact, over here, check this out. I'm going off road, guys. Look what we have over here. We have that country horsemen of America, Georgia, right? And look what their sign says. Trail courtesy. Courtesy on the trail. This is what it's all about, folks. And here we see a beautiful vegan sign. So what, what does this sign even mean? Really? What are we trying to do here? We're trying to make people aware. Low minimum impact, as she described, 
then you know it's gonna it's gonna be composed. Now um, I I'm just just curious. I've seen the first first um I can lie. Yeah, yeah, look at it. Is that common or is that not common? No, 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 no. Right. So that's good. So yeah, we don't necessarily need to make the horse do a cat pole, but there are other ways of looking at that. So the yield rule basically means um, as you're hiking, see a horse, you're gonna stop, you're gonna let the person on the horse know, hey, I'm here, right? And you're gonna step to the side, let the horse go by. Here's an interesting question. What about a person who's hiking and someone who's riding a bike? On the trail. Who yields to who? The bike should yield. What was that? The foot yields to the bike. Okay. Anybody else disagree? Alright, we have a disagreement. Alright, what do you think? The bike yields to the horse. So, yeah, according to the no trace, um, and it's just it's just giving everybody on the same page. It's it's the um, the person on the bike should be able to the hiker. They they can stop. They can control. Right. If if we were to say, hey, guess what? You as the person sees the biker, and you better get out of the way. It's going to create more of an accident situation. Right. So it's just something to think about. Right. Now here's a funny one. Somebody's coming downhill. Yeah. Another person is going uphill, and they're about to crash into each other. Right. Hiking, just straight up hiking. No. It's a crash waiting to happen. Somebody's gonna give way. All right, who do you think gives way? The person going uphill or downhill? The downhill hiker is supposed to step to the side and let the uphill hiker go on by. And I just looked this up to confirm it because I've, I've heard people say, well, that doesn't make sense. But the truth is, the person going uphill is doing more work. The person going uphill, you know, it's harder for them generally to start and stop. It's easier to go downhill. That's all it is. Okay? So the downhill person says, okay, I'm going to step to the side. And the first thing they do is they find a bunch of flowers, and then they just step right in the flowers. Right? Were you guys paying attention earlier? <laughs> Does the downhill hiker step to the side by jumping in a bunch of flowers. <laughs> We're combining our principles, okay? They obviously need to find a place that's already, you know, safe and there's no uh, never seen flowers in. So this brings us to the end of our Leave No Trace principles, all seven, okay? But we're gonna do a test to see if we remember the answer. Okay? So what was number one? What are we doing with number one? Let's see. Think ahead. Here we go. We're planning and preparing ahead. Woohoo! Okay. Number two. Where are we going to walk? We're going to walk on the trail. Right? We stand for the service day. Number three. What are we going to do with?
for me, Trey. So, so the Leader of Trace organization is an independent organization. It's a research organization. All they do is research impacts. And if you go to their website, which is like, I think just lnt.org, you can go to their website, and you can see all this information for yourself. They have great videos. Um, they have wonderful uh, information. Most of what I said is, is going to be found on that site. But then they offer training. I, 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 so if you want, you can actually become a trainer, trainer by myself. Um, I actually went through a certification uh, to become a trainer first. And then I went for the next level, which was a, they call it master educator, but it's pretty called level you know? yeah. Um, and that was five days of the Smokies. Literally out in the Smokies, experiencing uh, impacts and understanding how to teach this. So that's what made me kind of like a higher level. And I can teach, I now can teach other trainers, as well as the you know, teach people like you. So, that's a good question. So the Georgia Appalachian Trail Club, as I mentioned, um, maintains the trail. Okay, but they must have an education side. If they ignore the education side, then there's no way people would know about the no trace, and there's a good chance that there'd be a lot more impact. So I'm actually uh, part of the Trail Ambassador Group. So Georgia Appalachian Trail Club has a whole bunch of these trail ambassadors who go out on the trail, what we call a patrol. They wear a uniform, and you see all this wearing. Um, and they basically go out and talk to hikers. We're out on the trail, we're just having our resources. Um, we've encountered people that unfortunately need some medical assistance. They run into some trouble, so we can offer some help. Um, but we're also out there just to kind of continue to spread that knowledge and experience and hopefully help these people prepare them for success to get off the way they go. So it's the trail ambassador group that they've been working out with the trail program that I apply all of these new traces. Okay, good question. Yeah. And if anybody wants to learn more about the Georgia Atlas Trail Club, let me see our booth over here. If, you're, if, if everything I've told you has inspired you to either just learn more as a, as a hiker, please go to our website. Um, but if you want to actually be a participant in all of this, again, you can become a member as well and you can join as a maintainer or as a uh, trail ambassador. Okay? Any other questions? Good. All right, thank you so much. I really appreciate it.